Welcome back to another episode of the Modern Software Developer. My name is Todd Miller. This is Thomas Schissler, both professional Scrum trainers for Scrum.org. What's happening today, Thomas? So I think uh, we will test out how pair programming could look like. And I think uh, you have already a bug in mind in our game that we will apply pair programming and maybe we can also do TDD. What do you think? I think so. I think uh, I think I might have found a bug here. If everybody remembers our battleship application that we uh, that we have a video on, we walk through a little bit in our first episode. Uh, here it is again. And let me remove this so that we can see it. And one thing I noticed, Thomas, I'm not sure if you noticed this either, but uh, you know we're we're in the game setup here. We're ready to hit uh, and set up a board. And I am uh, I just hit enter. Oh, and the whole thing shuts up. The whole thing. Oh, that's what did. We should fix that. Yeah, that's not a good experience for the user. Uh, so, I think probably the best way to start this is to write a unit test. What do you think? Yeah, let's probably just uh, quickly identify uh, which thing we should test. So I think it should be probably in the initialize game method. Can okay, mm -hmm. you just uh, click on this initialize game method on? line 45 and then hit f12 to go to its definition yeah. and i actually just right clicked and went to go to definition <laughs> yeah. F12 works yeah too. i'm more a keyboard <laughs> guy oh yeah so we have initialized my fleet there i think that's probably where i would suspect the problem uh to happen here and, yeah, that and you can is... start to see the prompts here too. So where where we're entering the game position, please enter the positions for the size. You can start to see the prompts here in the console. So I think we're in the right spot. Yeah, and then I think the at position there might be uh, the the problem that we would like uh, to identify here. So yeah, I'm going to drill down into that to see. So at position. Uh, and so we have a method here that takes an input of string, right? And it's just checking to see, um, uh, 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 well, right now it's just checking to see if the positions are null, which is a which is a, a different story here. But how do we then, what do, what do you think we do here? Because we want to make sure that, uh, um, th this is what I'm thinking is catching it right now. It's trying to translate to a letter and a number and we're just given an empty, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe we should test this input here to see if it is empty and prompt the message and say they have to enter something. What do you think? So I, I think probably that's exactly the point where we should um, apply a test-driven development. So let's mm -hmm. first write a test that we can see how um, it exactly behaves. But that at position method seems exactly the method that we want to test here. Yeah. So uh, we should probably add a new unit test here, calling this method with just an empty string. And then I would expect that uh, it throws this exception um, that causes our application to crash. So we can then fix the bug and see if the test turns into green. So then we could be quite confident that we fix at least this scenario. Yeah, so that's a solid point. Uh, so uh, just kind of taking a time out from us fixing our bug, right? Um, when when doing test-driven development, the idea is to write a failing test first, right? And so rather than go in and write the solution, what we want to do is we want to call this method, as Thomas, you have said, and we want to basically have this method throw an exception. And then from there, we'll go fix it so it doesn't, right? So we're going to go red, green, and 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 hopefully 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 we get this right, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we could probably do some uh, refactoring then because uh, I think there could be potential to to improve this uh, anyway. So I I would say that uh, we have already a couple of test projects there, mm -hmm. and um, so we are now currently uh, testing a method in the um, in the ship class that we have here um, in, in our uh, product. So that's about uh, game controllers. And um, we could either just add it to one of those existing test projects uh, to get quickly started. And then maybe at a later point, we can refactor it to create a new test project uh, for the for the contracts uh, project that we have in there, because we don't have one yet. So you're thinking about, um, uh, so we have this uh, Battleship game controller tests over here. Yeah, um, I think that's uh, edit first here. What's that? I'm sorry. 
Yeah, let's, let's just edit here and then later yeah. we can refractor it uh, to more proper place. But I agree. So, so right now we're just to looking to see if uh, ship is not valid and ship is valid. We have two different test methods. So I think we want to te uh, test here and probably write a test method that says something like, I'm just going to do the old copy and paste here, right? I'm going to, I'm going to copy, uh, copy the uh, declarator. I think you can copy maybe the whole method because we can probably even reuse some of the logic in there. Yeah, so. there we go. Yeah. And then we'll say, uh, is, uh, sh how about is, what do you want to call it? Is, uh, ship input So we valid? could say, uh, that, uh, yeah, or we could say, um, at empty position to ship, um, like that how about yeah. at mp ship position yeah because we want to test this very specific scenario and that's probably one thing that for me is always important about tdd is that you are explicit about a very specific scenario that you're going to test so we're not caring about anything else that could go wrong when we enter sh ship positions here it's just about the the empty scenario for now yeah, very explicit. We want to say when adding a ship that we're trying to add an empty ship position, just like me hitting enter. So uh, good, good call out, Thomas. Very explicit. Yeah. And so yeah, we realize that, though, that the problem exists in this um, add a position method, right? This add a position method. Um, so yeah. we got to be able to, to to be able to call that add a position method, right? Yeah. So we have already the line where we initialize the ship. So I think we can get rid of line 47. We don't need a position here, but we need the ship. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can just call the, um, yeah, I, I think we don't need the positions there. So just keep it uh, empty. So I think we can remove this part with the positions here. I'm talking about taking that yeah. out, yeah. 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 Okay. And then we can probably add a new line after 47 where we say ship dot add position and then we just uh, pass an empty string there. That will be exactly what you do on the console. Yeah. I think the interesting part is now that we should uh, create some clarity about what would be the expected behavior then. So what should we, uh, the, the add position method do if the position is not valid? Well, so what, what I expect is going to happen when we would run this is that it's going to throw an exception, right? Um, what we would like to do is we'd probably like them to return. So ultimately, in the end, we would probably like it to return a message to the user saying that they cannot input an empty um, uh, message. Do you agree, Thomas? Yeah, I think that would be great. So with that, I think what we could do, can you quickly switch to the program CS file again, where we oh, call yeah. this method? just mm -hmm. to get a, a bit more clarity. What we could do then is that we return a Boolean value from this add position method that will then indicate if that was uh, that position was successfully added or mm -hmm. not. So we can deal um, printing an output to the user and probably asking to re-enter the position down. I think that's a good idea. So you're 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 suggesting that we change this uh, to a function and return a true or false if the position was added? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like and then that. if we validate the position and we see that's an invalid position, we return false and then print a message to the user that that was not a valid position. Okay. But first we still need to make this unit. Well, this unit test will fail because it's going to throw an exception, right? Yeah. Yeah. So should we try to run it? So, uh, yeah, I think we can get rid of line 49. Oh, yep. 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 That's not doing anything for us. Yeah, and the, uh, the assert uh, should not be true here as well. So we will already throw an exception. That That's a good point. So you're thinking in baby steps, that's that's yeah, what I'm talking Yeah, because right now we don't have a result. What we want to do is we'd want this to be um, some kind of bool, right? Um, we'd want maybe, it to be- yeah, Maybe, no, we just uh, expect that it doesn't throw an exception, right? So that's probably our first step. So. Switching this to returning a bool would be already our first implementation to fix the bug. So let's get just uh, rid of the assert. So oh, just yep. remove line. And yeah, and so oh, you're you're suggesting yeah, let's get it to throw the exception because yeah. this should throw and, an exception. Yeah, and if you run the test, it uh, will uh, result in a red test. I would just say. Yeah. 
And we're running. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the test explorer. Oh yeah, there is the red test. Okay. Ah, and that's what we want. Yeah. So yeah, that's the strange thing fairly. about TDD. So you're happy if you have a red test, right? <laughs> yeah, to, to start, <laughs> to start. So we have a red test. We've, we've, uh, the, and the idea with this is, this is actually just, this is just explicitly throwing an exception, right? This is just fundamentally not working because we haven't implemented what you've insinuated, which is to return a Boolean. So now yeah. the step would be, let's go change that method into a function and return a true or false. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. And then we'll come back and update our test after that. So we have a red test. We have a test that's failing. We're going to come back in here and uh, we want to change this uh, int from a method to a Boolean. So bool. We're not returning anything yet. So we want to be able to add a true. So how would we, uh, what would you say? Should we just test the string input? We have positions and all. Should we just do an if here? You think, and look oh. at the input? I think what we can do probably as a first step, just say return true at the end of this uh, method. Yeah, that we, way we get rid of the red. Yeah, yeah, it will still be red because it still will throw uh, throwing an exception, but then uh, that will enable us to add an assertion to our test, I would say. Mm -hmm. So if you can switch to the test again. Gotcha. Then now we can say just certain. say, maybe something like var uh, actual equals ship at position so that we get the boolean there what do you, what do you want to call this var well, i usually call it actual it's the, the actual result of this but well, it's just how i do it so it's i like that actual is pretty good that makes sense thomas so now um we're still going to get an exception here because we're adding an empty yeah. position. So we're still exactly. going to be red. I'm going to run it again just, just to show. Yeah. Still going to be red. So, but that would be, um, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm wrong. It should not be true in this case. Uh, it should be false, mm. the, mm -hmm. the actual. So the, our search should be is false. Mm. Oh, yes, that's actually, yeah, yeah, because when we put the empty in, we want it to return false. We want yeah. it to return false. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, and then we can now change uh, our implementation to turn this test finally into a red one. Uh, we could uh, easily say um, if input, yeah. or if, uh, if string dot is empty input, I think that's uh, the proper way in C sharp. String is null or empty, I think. Yeah. Oh. So I you guess green, this you should get a green light after this, Thomas. I I hope so. Let's see. <laughs> the unit test will tell us. So I'm just coming, I like to, I always like to, when I'm specifically, and now this is just me, I think we all fall into habits, but when I'm specifically writing a unit test, I just come and like to instantiate it from here when I'm looking at it. Cause it helps me to think about if the logic that I wrote is, 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 is going to solve the problem. So I'm just going to run tests. I like to run tests from here. You know, I feel like we all have our own habits. Do you have the same thing? I, when we when we're about to show your Visual Studio, we're going to see the background as white, and and mine. I like the dark background. Everybody has their own preferences on how they do things. And the thing that I find really cool about pair programming is like a thing like actual. It seems really small. Like you really like a result for ver actual for where the ship position is. I like that, but I don't do it that way. But maybe I will now which makes a more cohesive code base. Like we're learning together. We're also working together, right? Absolutely. Do you, by, by the way, way our, you know, our test worked. Yeah, cool. By the way, do you know about the live unit test feature that um, comes with uh, some versions of Visual the studio? I, a, I do not. Part. Tell me about it. So that, that's really awesome. So you can uh, let Visual Studio run your unit test in the background while you're writing the code. Mm. So 
you but are changing the code here and it shows you after a second or so that this code that you have that you're actually seeing is making your test pass so you don't have to execute you don't have to trigger your test it's done by visual studio automatically in the background and you know what i think that's a brilliant because so many times I, we run into ci builds that go too long because the tests are not as small as this like these are really small tests and when it goes through your continuous integration build, these should give a really quick response, easy feedback to you, right? That's the idea. Your continuous integration build shouldn't be something that takes a long time to run. And I yep. think that by having it within Visual Studio, given system limitations, that if you're getting that immediate feedback that you're probably writing your unit tests really nice and discreet, like you were talking about yep. before, Thomas. Yeah, and especially for TDD, where you execute your unit tests frequently, that's a really nice feature. I really like it. Okay, but yeah, we have a green test. So that means sure. that at least our uh, at position method now can uh, nicely handle this uh, empty positions. And we could then just update our program CS to see, okay, is this returning a false? Then we should have uh, to, to uh, the user to re-enter the position because it's invalid. Probably, I think we can ignore this integration in the UI for now because yeah. we want to focus on the TDD part. Um, I think we can probably uh, then just think about maybe the empty position is not the only issue that we are having here. Yeah, you know what I'm thinking about doing, though, Thomas? I think I'm going to check this in. I think I'm going to push some changes up to Git. And why don't you pull them down? How's that sound? Sure, let's do that. So um, I'm going to say uh, fixed empty position um bug i know we should probably have a bit better of a uh of, of a message than that but i'm gonna i'm gonna uh i'm gonna check this in and push it your way okay okay successfully pushed cool let me do a pull all right and whenever you're ready, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my myself from the screen. Yeah. And I'm going to add your version of Visual Studio. Are you ready for that? All right. Yeah, let's go. So I have the at empty position here. Uh, oh, you know what? Did I? Maybe just rebuild it. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yep. Okay, we will all succeed it. And I think what we can do here now is, um, what do you think, what, do you have a suspicion what else could cause uh, some problems with uh, the positions we are entering here? Yeah, you know it's interesting because what I was noticing when we were when we were modifying that when we changed that add position um, uh, method into a function and made it a boolean. One thing I noticed is that um, it's really keying off those enums to devise a position, and we our board's limited, right? Our board doesn't have a z position, for instance, right? It doesn't have. And so when it goes to convert that enum, if we were to enter something outside the bounds of an actual position, if we were to enter a Z, which is outside the bounds of the board, um, I think it would fail. What do you think, okay. Thomas? Let's find out. So easiest way would be to write a unit test. So I'm not sure why my wish studio will underline uh, this <laughs> thing here, but yeah. So, um, let me just uh, see if I can uh, start a live unit test session here. Uh, okay, let's finish this. Let's see if I can get this running here. And um, that, and that should be our assumption. That should uh, give us a red unit test again, because if we add uh, an position outside of the board, um, then it uh, should uh, return a false, but actually uh, currently it does throw an exception. So that's now how you see the indication of our live unit test. So you see there are those red X's uh, next to my code that uh, tells me that um, this 
while executing this code, this test method, um, uh, it discovered a red test case. And so I don't have to execute uh, the test cases manually. So that's really a great feature. Yeah, I like it. So let's uh, with that go into our ad position. What would you propose how we could fix that? So it seems like a really easy solution to just check for Z, but I don't think that's a permanent long term one. I think yeah. that uh, something that would be good for us to do here is to uh, check to see if um, if there is an alphanumeric that is outside the bounds of an enum and then return false if that's the case. What do you think about that? Yeah, so I think we already have um, here the, um, the input with a substring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we have the substring here. So I think we can probably just uh, refactor this out of this uh, long, even long line here and mm -hmm. then um, having this as a string so we can check the string before we put it into the parser. I think that's a great idea. Check the string. And then if it's outside the bounds of an enum, we put it in the parser. That way we're covering uh, lots of ed edge cases because I think that um, we could write another unit test for Y or anything outside the bounds of the board, right? So I wonder if, if we could um, if we could make it that it would that it would fit. Will you for our first implementation be okay if we uh, just assume um, a static size for our board? Uh, so I know currently in our game, uh, the positions can be from A to H. And yep. we check, is it smaller than A or is it bigger than H? And um, I think it will be a little bit more complicated to see, okay, if it's in the boundaries uh, of the, the genome. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it might be I think it might be um, a, a great idea to check to see if uh, if it's in the bounds that you described. I think that we're going to have a fixed board size for this game for right now. Anyway, I don't see why we wouldn't want to make it that. And I think we can do an easy comparison with lower than and bigger than uh, if it's a, a character. Mm -hmm. So so if it's lower than a. Okay. That should work. So, um, you want the same thing and greater than I'm gonna convert type string to char. It's doing it uh, the plain way. We have the refactor step in our um, TDD cycle. So let me just get it working quickly, and then we can discuss how we will probably refactor this code to make it look a bit, little bit nicer because I'm not really happy with it, how it looks like currently. Yeah. That's actually a good point. Um, so it's interesting the strategy that you take, because uh, let's get this passing. Because what I would suggest is perhaps we could just have like a list of the boundaries of the board to check and see if it's within the list and let it pass on. Or we could have the opposite, a list of what's outside the boundaries. But for right now, let's get this puppy working. OK, so if the letter of the string um, is lower than A or uh, greater than H, then we should return a false. And then uh, we have just to pass the letter string mm -hmm. in here uh, to our parse method. And look at that, our test is green. <laughs> I love that. I love the live testing feature. How, how, how fantastic is that? And I think that it's just a reminder to write your tests small or you can't do this or you won't be able to do it, right? It would take too long. Everything would be quite slow. So yeah. Awesome. And yeah, so we have a green test. So let's see what we should uh, refactor here. Yeah, so it's interesting. Let's suppose then, Thomas, that we come back to this and we have to add functionality to this in two months. How much safer does it feel when we see this and we go, oh, wow, Thomas, we did not write this the way that we thought we should write this two months ago. 
How much safer do you feel refactoring it right now, knowing that this is we're, 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 we have a test behind this, making sure that it's within the bounds of the board? Yeah, and, and I think that is exactly the definition of refactoring. It's improving your code without changing its behavior. Or in other words, you could yeah. say, uh, we are changing the code without breaking the existing unit test. That is what, what I would call refactoring. Um, yeah, and I think you're absolutely right here that this unit test already gives us uh, way more safety for future changes. Uh, but um, I find it always an interesting question, but for probably refactoring is another topic we will discuss in one of uh, the upcoming episodes here. But yeah. Ray, Ray, you just should we refactor just right away when we are already in the context or will we refactor this a little bit later? And that's what the TDD cycle implies that once you have written a functionality, uh, once you are in the context of the test, uh, try to to improve it. Uh, Make it better right on the spot. Yeah. 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 And, and I think we have an opportunity to do this for this one. Um, what do you think of... Uh, what do you think the best way to handle this is? I, I threw out one idea where I thought we could potentially have a list of things that are outside the bounds of the board, but that might be a little bit rough around the edges. Yeah, I think uh, what we can obviously do at some point is to make those A and H uh, more dynamic. Probably mm -hmm. we even want to pass, the, uh, pass this in, but it's probably not required yet. So, mm -hmm. Um, I think what we could uh, first do is that we can, let's just see if that works. If I remove this to char, can I in C sharp just uh, use an indexer on a string? And that seems to compile and the test is still green. So it seems mm -hmm. it has exactly the same behavior than what we had before. Oh, that and you got, some, and you, got some, you got a little bit of ugly out of there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you want to just apply the, uh, the Boy Scout rule to say, okay, let's make it a little bit better. It's probably yeah. not to have to, to be perfect. And for me, it's always finding a good balance to really make progress and not to waste too much time to make this uh, perfect. And as you just mentioned, we have the safety net with our unit test to refactor this at any point. Yeah, so time. yeah, if we come back uh, maybe three years from now and C Sharp implemented something newer when it comes to looking at strings, right? Maybe we could use that here. Or if we um, if, if this is good for us for now and it looks good and it's the best that we can do, we now refactor it. It looks cleaner than it did before. Um, then, then, then we can move on, right? Because it, it, it inevitably we're going to come back into this, this, um, this, uh, this function uh, at add position, and as we expand the game and make the game more robust, uh, this is going to change. And so yeah. I, feel, I feel pretty safe about the fact now that we're not going to let empty strings or invalid character positions in. Yeah, and. Um... Obviously, another refactoring I would propose is now start moving out um, the um, the tests that we have created here uh, into a separate test project just to have a clean structure. Um, that will be another step, but I think probably we are not going to record this on the video because uh, <laughs> we are already talking for quite a long time. It's just like a couple of minutes, but uh, if I look at a timer, so it's already a long time. And um, I think we have this one requirement on our backlog that we want to have a configurable size for the board of the game. Then we will probably come back and fix that. But I'm also a big fan of the Yakni principle. So you ain't not going to need it. So let's not build something that we are not currently uh, needing. So let's build it when there is a demand for this functionality. So that can be in a later point in time. Yeah, build it, build it for today, not for yeah. every single circumstance that you can possibly think of, right? Yeah. Cool. And so we would have just to finish this up. We obviously would also check uh, the um, the rows, the numbers uh, that they are all also in between one to eight, and um, that will be another test uh, that we would add and then uh, extend our implementation. Then obviously we should not forget about handling the return of the Boolean value in our programs, yes, in our UI. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, that will be something that we could uh, 
just keep up uh, for outside of this video. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull this back in here. Yeah, I think that would be something good for the next time that we get together is maybe we can show like a finish, finishing move on it to use a little bit of Mortal Kombat <laughs> style stuff. But I think, uh, I'm like you, I, I think I'd be tempted as we start to extend that to probably reorganize and make uh, those unit tests in their own class, right? Just for just for the cleanliness of it. But for right now, we're taking good uh, input from the from the user. We're not taking anything outside the bounds of it. And uh, Thomas, unless you have anything to say, I think that maybe we'll go end screen. It was a pleasure to pair with you, Todd. Yeah. Oddly enough, this wasn't Thomas and I's first time pairing together. We paired together several times in the past. So <laughs> I'm going to bring up the end screen. Uh, so if you're finding use in these videos, the modern software developer, this is an experiment that Thomas and I are really trying. We're very passionate about it. Um, let us know what videos you'd like to see. Let us know what you think of these videos. I'm sure that you coders out there are probably thinking of new and greater things and different ways that we we could have done that. Um, that's all the, the, the stuff we like. But what else do you want to hear about? What else do you want to see? What other points of debate do you have? Make sure to like and subscribe for the Agile for Humans Network. And uh, yeah, we'll keep these videos coming. So uh, it's me, Todd Miller, and for Thomas Schisler. Thank you all. Thank you. Day.